welcome Lilo Staten to Ever Today. She is the New York, New Jersey Harbor Coalition Campaign Director. Here now to talk about protecting the environment. So good to see nice you. Nice to see you again. All right, so let's talk a little bit about parks. This is something that people a lot of times take for granted. They say, they say it's the government's responsibility. Not exactly. so. Well, first of all, Parks are so important. I mean, we do really take them for granted. These are places where, um, as the Obama administration has pointed out in some of its programs, you know, these are places that are healthy. There, you can you can um, you can get physical exercise. You can enjoy open space. They parks actually a well developed park will increase uh, real estate values by as much as twenty five percent. So there are a huge number of benefits that come from just preserving and protecting our parks and. Um, Not to mention it's free activity. You can go and enjoy most parks exactly. are free. Exactly. And for a family with kids, that's a really unbelievable ben benefit. And now as, you know, 60% of Americans now live in an urban area or near an urban area, so urban parks are becoming more and more important. And um, the Harbor Coalition is part of sort of a new trend mm. in which nonprofits are working with governments to sort of protect and preserve and improve our parks and other public resources like that. I've read stories about how some national parks are having to close because they don't have the money to simply right. staff it. So how does a nonprofit play into this? Well, going back, I mean, going back decades, we had a system where, you know, the United States under, under um, President Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, created all these incredible national parks. And in New York and New Jersey, we're lucky enough to have Gateway National Park, which was the first urban national park. Um, it was opened 40 years ago this year. Um, but today, you know, you have a situation where governments are strapped, yeah. obviously. They have incredible demands on them uh, for all kinds of services, and it's really sometimes hard to argue that open space is an important one or the most important one. So luckily, um, you see private companies coming in with advertising. Sometimes there are deals there. But also you see these nonprofits stepping up. In more and more places, we see these friends of parks. And the Harbor Coalition, for example, two of our, our co-chair organizations, one, the National Parks Conservation Association, is sort of a friends of the national parks. Well, can you give and me some examples of some, sure. uh, of, of some of these areas where it's working well? Some right. Where people might say, oh, I know that park. Oh, Exactly. Okay. Well, in New York City, we are really blessed. We have, for example, the High Line Park, which is a very popular park on the west side. Um, that was entirely done by public and private partnership. Central Park, of course, is an example. Um, in San Francisco, there's Golden Gate Park. And then you have the Harbor Coalition is really focused on the watershed. So you also have this model being used in various watersheds in, in San Francisco, in the Delaware Bays, in uh, San Juan, in Puerto Rico. So there's a whole sort of movement. And, and there are reasons that nonprofits can be more flexible. And, and they can go and advocate for the, to the government for more funding in ways that government can't. So it sounds like a win-win. Is there a downside for the public? Well, the catch is there's sort of a two-fold catch. And one is certainly that the more that your privates and your nonprofits step up, then the more that government can say, look, someone else is taking care of this. And it gets us away from that, that Teddy Roosevelt model where you know, we believe that the public dollar is, is an important thing to invest in this kind of resource. Again, the, for the real estate reasons, for the open space, for the, for the health and human, human uh, benefit in general. But there's also a question of you see the areas where there's less wealth of course, they have less donors from a sort of nonprofit standpoint. So we need to make sure as we do this, which is something the Harbor Coalition is very focused on, is making sure there's equitable access and equitable protection of these resources. As we close out this segment, you know, why should government be so concerned about parks given the state of the economy? Uh, people are out of work. They're scraping by. They can't pay their medical bills. Right. You know, parks and protecting open space is kind of falling down. It, it, there, you know, the, it's hard not to argue against medical costs and food stamps and other incredibly important programs that this country has. But I think it goes back to that notion of this is a free resource for the people. This is something that can protect their health. And it really, there is an economic development benefit, whether it's real estate or the work that's being done in parks. That's shown as much as a six to one return on the dollar. So there is a real benefit fit to small businesses in the economy underneath. And once you pave over a park, there's no getting it back to. That is true. Lilo, so good to see you. Nice to see you. Look forward to hopefully having you back on again. Love to come. All right.